Well, on this episode of Ed's Retro Geek Out, Ed heads over to Games & Co. I like it here. They give me a free drink. Picks up a current gen game. <laughs> Wait, did I read that wrong? And he closes in on the last 25 games needed for a full Game Boy set. All that coming up. Oh, hey Russ. Oh, hey Ed, what's going on? Hey, I thought I was doing a voiceover for you. No, dude, you're the extra very special guest in this episode. Should I uh, record some footage for you? I'll go get my camera. Don't you know there's cameras everywhere? Like, price charting has cameras on every retro gamer just to keep the prices up to date. But wait, I was naked in here earlier. One thing I really like to do on this channel is to go over to these retro gaming stores and show you guys what they have if they're good enough for you to make the trip. Today I head over to Ostend which is a touristic seaside city in Belgium. The game store that I'm going to is called Games & Co. It's located really near the center. You can walk there from the touristic center but where the store is located it's also not too crowded so you can definitely find a parking space quite fast. Head over to the store and enjoy yourself. So let's check out the store. Hey, this looks like my kind of store. Old and new games with a dash of 80s and 90s nostalgia. And arcades on free play mode. I love it here. So many Game Boy games. Now, next to all of the Game Boy games that are in these cases, I gotta ask, I gotta ask the owner, Yeroon, do you have some more Game Boy games or NES games? And he tells me he has a tub of Game Boy cards that I can dig through. So, right away, I start digging around. Whoa, a tub of overstock Game Boy games. I wouldn't mind digging around in that one. And I'm so focused at all these Game Boy games that I still need, I, I, I don't even see there's a Wonder Swan game boxed in here. There's also a Game Gear game in here that has like a weird shape, but I don't know, I'm just looking for Game Boy games. In this tub, I do end up finding one Game Boy game I need, so it was definitely already worth the trip. MVP Baseball, Roger Clemens MVP Baseball. Just a baseball game, not really gonna go into this. And in the cases, there's another Game Boy game I need called The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. The 1992 Game Boy port it's just of the NES game, and it only features three of the levels. <laughs> now, I don't know too much about Rock and Bullwinkle. I never watched this show, um, but yeah, the game isn't great. <laughs> the NES version wasn't great either. It's a single player platform, and it's not so great, but it's a great addition for anyone going for a full Game Boy set. When you're going for a full set, that's just the way this geek out plays out or goes. I guess. I gotta work on that. So I'm walking around the store and I see a couple of really cool things around here. <laughs> One of the items that is definitely catching my eye is the Sega Mega CD section or the Sega CD section. Uh, one of them has a hefty price tag. 
Whoa, that's a hefty price tag. 500 euros? Yeah, but it's sealed. It never hurts to have a showstopper like that in the store. It's definitely a showstopper. You need a couple of these in your store to have some eye candy for the people that want to come in and want to check it out. Recruit a team of teenagers with attitude. Did you know they used footage from a couple episodes of the TV series to make this game? Critics say that it's simple and an easy game, and all you have to do is press certain buttons at certain time in the game to move along in it. But it's a trip down nostalgia lane, nonetheless. It is, however, very cool. I mean, Russ, didn't you grow up loving the Power Rangers? Oh man, I remember coming home from school and watching this show religiously. I couldn't get enough of it. And when the movie came out, I was blown away. I must have got the VHS tape of it and watched it a hundred times until I wore it out. I never really got into the later series and just kind of stuck with Mighty Morphin but it was still a great time and I enjoyed every minute of it. They had such great beat-em-ups on the Super Nintendo and I enjoyed playing those so much. I definitely had the same experience like you. I was really into the Mighty Morphin and I watched the movie. I had it on VHS too. I watched it a ton, but then when things started changing, when they went to like the Robo Rangers, I don't know what happened to it, but uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of geared off into Beast Wars at that time. That was the next big thing, the Beast War Transformers. Alrighty, two Game Boy games so far. I started talking to the owner called Jeroen. He's a very nice guy. Hello, I'm Jeroen from uh, Games & Co. Ostende, Belgium. He grew up on games. My, my first console was a game I watched, Parachute, and then uh, Donkey Kong. Then. Bom Bomb Sweeper. Bomb Sweeper. Bomb sweeper. Yeah. Game & Watch is what he grew up with. It's one of the consoles I really want to collect for, but it's so darn expensive. They have a couple here in the store. Uh, however, I already have the ones that he asked for sale. So, no Game & Watch today, but at least I get to talk to him about the Game & Watch. What a cool LCD console this is. And did you play arcades? Uh, I play arcades uh, for my eight years until now. Complete arcade addicted. Whoa! That's cool! And uh, how long have you had the shop? Uh, the shop, uh, six years. And we sell uh, everything from uh, the Atari 2600 until the, the Lost Games uh, Switch, Xbox One, Play 4, everything. And you're open every day or...? Uh, it's closed on Sunday and Monday, but every day open. From 11 till...? From 11 six. till 6, right. yes. Cool. And then I head over to the 16-bit games, the SNES. I also checked out the Mega Drive section. There's a lot of boxed Mega Drive games over here but none for me. However, I do see a 16-bit RPG called Lagoon. I keep on bumping into this one, the PAL version, but it's always in German, so I gotta go for the NTSC version on this one. Aha, a 16-bit RPG game. It looks great. But it's always not clear on what you're supposed to do to return peace to the lake land. Nice to see PAL and NTSC SNES games, but how do you choose which one to get? Do you get the PAL version or the NTSC version? The way I kind of pick whether I'm going to get the PAL version or the NTSC version is basically pricing. Sometimes the PAL version is very cheap, sometimes it's the NTSC version is very cheap. If I can find the more expensive one for cheap, I'll pick up that one, but usually I'll go for the cheaper one of the two and try to even get that one cheaper. Um, just that the retro games are so expensive, so if it's basically the same game, I'm gonna go for the cheapest way possible of getting it. 
And of course that means Frankensteining together a, a set, but hey, it adds to the flavor, some difference, some some funky stuff in there. I, I don't mind. I, I I can play all of it, so why not? There's also another game I've been looking for, and it's actually a new game. It's called Octopath Traveler. Now, I've been to a couple of stores around the area here. Just as it came out, it was never in store. But over here, they actually also have some current gen stuff. In the Switch case, there's Octopath Traveler. And I pick it up, and I couldn't be happier. Oh, hold on there, Buster. I thought this was Ed's retro geek out. You're not gonna rebrand like the angry Nintendo nerd. Cause that's a new game. Are you serious? It, it's kind of retro this game. How so? It's inspired by the 16-bit RPGs of the SNES era. They use a thing called 2D HD in this game which looks amazing and of course it's made by Squaresoft. How could you not get a game that was made by Squaresoft? They only make jewels, they make diamonds of games. And I also heard that the battle system is supposed to be really good. Mm, okay, I'll go easy on you this time, but I got my eyes on you. See, I see you're already kind of curious about this game. Have you played it already? Well, I haven't played this one yet, but I heard great reviews from everyone that picks it up. I don't really have time to get into RPGs right now, so I can't dive into this game but it looks fun. I had an amazing time over at Games & Co. I will leave links down in the description below so you can find out where this cool retro game store is. Uh, Ed, you know I work at a retro video game store. I'm sure we got something down here you'd be interested in. We're open Monday, so come down and see me. So, Russ actually works at a game store. They have three different locations. I will leave some links down in the description below, so my American friends also have something cool to go to. And if you're ever in Belgium, definitely hit me up and I might hop over with you over to Games & Co. Well, Ed, thanks so much for having me. If you guys want to check out my channel, there'll be a link in the description down below. And I do weekly vlog videos, unboxings, let's plays, and a whole lot of other stuff on there. I want to thank Russ Lyman so much for being a special guest today. Uh, he has a ton of great content on his channel. It's really boom full of content. I especially like the vlogs that he does. There's some retro gaming in there, there's photography, there's some music, like punk stuff in there, so that's always cool. He also has this weekly video he does where he shows you what was brought into the store where he works at. And if you guys are interested in the game store I work at, it's called Retro Games Plus. We have three locations in Connecticut and one in Huntington Beach, California. I want to thank you guys for watching. I will be back with another video next Monday. Maybe there will be one on Friday this week. I'm not sure yet, but uh, until then, check out one of these videos. And if this is your first video, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next week on Monday. Bye!